textiles and dry felting. We're going to focus on the art elements of line, shape and colour. And we're going to look at our symbols chart again and we're going to look at some of Miro's work. Uh, this last piece of work, I'm going to admit something to you. I'm hopeless at textiles and had a fear of it for such a long time. Now, I only bought my textile, dry felting textile kit last year, so I've only just got it for, had it for a year. So you only need the felting block, dry felting needles, the wool, and sheets of felt. Now, for someone that fears textiles, because I have an image of threading 24 needles and how horrible that's gonna be, this is fantastic. You're gonna love it. It's very doable. It's very, very cheap. Once you have all your materials, they last forever. And that everybody loved it. So it's a really exciting activity if you've never done it before. So looking at a Miro picture, we're just looking at Again, we've done our colour theory, so our primary and secondary colours. Now we're going to just look at shapes. We've got circles, this moustache, sweeping lines, little triangles, the eyes, um, all colours. You've got the symbol chart that we've made up, which is behind me. You've got spirals, and we're just going to work with those shapes. Now, because I'm an adult, I don't need to do a rough copy, but you would need to do a drawing or let the children have experience before they go onto the dry felting, otherwise you're giving them a disadvantage. So, let's get on with it. The first thing we're going to do is take a piece of dry felt, not dry felt, or just felt sheet, and you just cut it in half. So, one sheet makes two halves and you put your block, I'm just going to move this picture. And I always do safety needles, so I, make, I hand the needles out and I say to the students, when I'm talking I want everyone's needle in the corner and that's their safety spot and that's the starting and ending spot. So they get their felt. I had um, sticky labels and I put them underneath for their name at the end. And safety needle in the corner. Okay, I have one here already, so I'm just going to look at some shapes from my one and from the Miro picture. So, it's very, very simple. I put a bit of wool in the middle of each table and you just pinch. That's heaps. And I'm going to make a ball shape first, so you roll it into a little ball. And you do have to give the students a little discussion about their fingers and stabbing themselves. You can go quite fast, but I start off quite slowly. I've got my finger. I do not want to stab myself, obviously. So I just do it quite slowly to get started. Once you've done a few stabs, you can move your finger away and you can go a little bit faster. Now, the more you stab, the tighter the shape gets. It doesn't mean you have to have it tight. You can actually leave loose, fluffy bits out, which I will show you. But I'm going to just make a shape at the moment. So you can see I'm going step, 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 step. So there, there's my first shape, which that looks good already. <laughs> okay, so now I've done a circle. I'm going to show you a line. So I take a bit of the wool. Actually, I'm not going to show you a line yet. What I'm going to do is a circle in a circle. So I've taken a smaller piece and I'm going to do a little circle in the circle. Again, slow to start off with because I don't want to stab my finger. I don't ever let the um, students put their needles on the table. If they're, not, if they're not dry felting, they have to have it in what I call the safety corner. And I always let my students talk while they're working but when they're dry felting, I actually don't let them talk because I explain to them if they're moving their heads and talking, there is a possibility they can stab themselves. So this is probably the only class where we have music with no talking. Otherwise, I don't mind talking. So that's nice already. I've got my two primary colours, well, three. I've got the background and the other two. So now I'm going to do a line. So I'm going to take a little bit of the wool. That's not a little bit. That's a giant bit. That's still a giant bit. Okay, I'm going to just felt it in the middle and I'm going to leave fluffy bits on the side, which you, you, you can do. So 
you hold it to where you want it like that. Now I can go quite fast because my fingers are back. Now this is very doable. This is for upper levels, but I've done this with um, middle levels. I wouldn't do it with lower levels, not yet. I'd save it for something special. Now I can't remember how much it was to set up the dry felting, but it was really, really a lot cheaper than I thought. The felting blocks, and you have to get the special ones. You can't buy other ones that doesn't work. And the wool, you can see how little I'm taking. It's such an economical class. And my students did this for a whole term. So by the time they did their drawings and their rough copies, and then they did their felting, it, this was a term. Now, you don't have to stab at all. You can leave bits like that. That can be done on purpose. And I actually quite like that. I'm going to show you how to safety corner. I'm going to show you how to thread a um, pony bead. So if you want to add another element, you make your roll it into your sausage or your coil. Again, a 3D language is evolving. Language and art go together really well. Here I was saying I'm no good at threading in textiles and I'm just proving it. There we go. And I wouldn't do this for the students. If they can't do it themselves, I'm not doing it. No way. I'm not going to walk around and thread things for them. So that could be maybe as an extension for the higher students. You can just see how I'm getting the needle near the bead. Right, now, I don't want a straight line, so I'll just push that in at the start and then you can curve it whatever shape you want and you just put the hold that down and then you keep going. You just have to be really aware of where your fingers are. And you can make all little interesting shapes. And you can do this too it's getting a bit tricky now. I can move that with my needle. Can you see how I'm just moving that with the needle? And I'm going to hold it there with my finger. Do it slowly. Move my finger out the way. And I've made a little coil, a little curve. Now there is a um, spiral shape. If you had a student that was very advanced, you could challenge them to make a spiral because that would be quite difficult. I don't know if I'm that advanced. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to stop there. I have a completed one here um, because I could go and go and go. You get the idea. So when you finish the work and what's really good about this is that if a student works slow, it, it just becomes more sparse. And if a child is advanced, they can add beads or extra details like a shape on a shape. When you're finished, you're going to want to have a um, display and your reflection time with the students is really important too and this will um, help you understand how much they understood or did they enjoy it, what they found difficult, what they found easy and have that two-way conversation. You can display these in little frames um, or on backing paper or they can just go straight into the wall or you might think of a very creative way. 
Okay, so we've gone over all the elements again and it, I just wanted to say that when you're rolling these shapes, we've just rolled them in magic clay, we've rolled them in clay and now we've rolled them in felt and they all feel different. So you've in fact had texture lessons as well. You've done shape, you've done colour, you've done form, you've done line, you've done texture and we've explored them in all different mediums and it's exciting and the students will really appreciate and love what they have done.